Greetings and salutations horror movie fans, my name is Gilbert Ybarra and welcome back to the Attic Review. On today's episode of TAR, I am so happy to talk about the unsung horror icon Victor Crowley and his swamp adventures in the 80s style Hatchet. Although released in 2006, this slasher feels heavily influenced by the 80s and its carefree attitude towards sex and gore and its ability to deliver good scares while not taking itself too seriously. And it is loaded with horror royalty, you'll see later on. In my eyes, Victor Crowley is one of the most underappreciated villains out there, but with this review and watching the film, you can help me spread the word about this bad mofo. In traditional attic review fashion, I'm going to break the movie down into the three acts as I saw them play out, what I liked and disliked about each act, how I felt about the movie overall, so without further ado, let's get into the violent stylings of Hatchet. We open the film in the dark of night in a swamp where immediately Robert England is in character as a gator hunter named Samson. With him is his son Ainsley and they're out there trying to make a living. And Ainsley's got to step off the boat to take a pee pee and shake his wee wee. And upon his return he sees his father torn to shreds. Then talk about a first impression as we meet the Victor Crowley and his impressive work ethic in dismantling bodies. This is going to be a really fun movie. But not so fun is the whiny Ben, who we meet during Mardi Gras and is one pathetic loser. <laughs> no offense. Apparently heartbroken or whatever, he decides to split from his group of friends to go seek out a haunted swamp tour that he's heard so much about. His best friend Marcus is a good dude and joins him and together they meet Reverend Zombie, played by Candyman's Tony Todd, and he regrets to inform that due to negligence he is being sued and can no longer do swamp tours. He adds to his negligence though by suggesting another shop that does tours but are offered by a dumbass named Sean who is zealous to say the least but isn't the most competent person. But let's load up and head to that swamp. Joining Ben and Marcus is a wannabe porn director named Doug and his two starlets Jenna and Misty. Also joining them, a so nice they're annoying elderly married couple named Jim and Shannon. And lastly, a baddie with a mission named Mary Beth. Yeah, that's everybody. After Ben shoots his shot with Mary Beth and is hilariously shoot away, we are whisked away on the magic school bus for some carnage candy in the swamp. The signs are everywhere that Sean knows Jack and shit about the swamp tour gig and speaking of Jack, a urine drinking homeless swamp man named Jack Cracker tries to warn a group that the swamp is closed due to some guy named Victor Crowley. Me, personally, I would have listened to the pee-pee drinker, but that wouldn't have made for a good movie, so let's head on down the bayou. And talk about the wrong stuff, as Sean is ridiculously in over his head and is corrected about pretty much everything on his swamp tour, including his mistelling of the legend of Victor Crowley. And he turns off the lights to create a spooky atmosphere, but his bad storytelling forces him to turn the lights back on and oh shit, was that a Victor Crowley sighting? Oh, it totally was, but they don't know that yet, and on that note we end Act 1. Speaking of sightings, don't be that rare sighting of someone watching this channel without subscribing, so click like and subscribe so we can get into the Act 1 likes and dislikes. Act 1 likes all start with the atmosphere. This movie just feels amazingly fun. I love the over-the-top characters and cheesy dialogue. And the set design in the swamp looks so manicured to the point of looking fake, but I don't care because this is the nostalgia that I've missed in other films. The burst of opening violence was gory enough to hold us over as character development took over. So the movie is impressive in establishing humor and quick lore around the villainous star before we get into what the swamp holds in Act 2. Act 1 easter egg that I loved was all the cameos from all of our horror heroes. We have Freddy, Candyman, and Jason Voorhees all within the first 15 minutes of this film. I don't know how the director pulled this off, but I think we're all glad that he did. Act 1 dislike? Just the character of Ben was a little too off-putting for me. I know that was probably the goal of actor Joel David Moore, but like Tug Speedman with Simple Jack, he just took it too far. His performance aside, everything about Act 1 was solid, so now let's get into the swamp of horrors in Act 2. Act 2 begins with boring Ben striking out left and right with Mary Beth when Swamp Master Sean expertly gets his boat stuck on a tree. And wouldn't you know it, the rain begins, making it look like hard rain from Left 4 Dead 2. 
Things go from shitty to shittier as the boat begins to sink and then old man Jim from the married couple tries to cross the tree to get to land. And as he's doing this, a gator jumps up and starts gnawing on his leg like an appetizer, but Mary Beth stays strapped and pops a couple of caps in that gator's ass. And that little Wyatt Earp action allowed the rest of the group to successfully get to land. Now it comes to light that Sean is a fraud that barely bought the company and has only done one swamp tour so far. <laughs> yeah, he sucks. And then Mary Beth explains to her concerned peers that she has a gun because these woods are freaking haunted. And she's out here because her daddy and brother, aka those two dudes earlier that got shredded up by Victor Crowley, went missing and she's out there because Fivo didn't believe her. This leads us to the actual haunting tale of Victor Crowley and why they need to leave these woods right meow. Mary Beth tells the tragic story of Mr. Crowley, aka Kane Hodder, and how he had a son named Victor who was born badly disfigured, so he tried to keep them hidden away, but people suck. Some cruel teenage punks pulled a prank gone wrong, and in an attempt to save his son, Mr. Crowley accidentally kills his beloved son. After killing his son with a hatchet, Mr. Crowley died a decade later of a broken heart, and that's when people started disappearing around the swamp. And apparently Victor's been calling out for his daddy at night. Spooky. And that's why it's illegal to go in these parts, and why Sean chose this dreadful row, and has now filed their fates in the Doom section. And then a cool reveal of the actual Crowley house has the group filled with apprehension as they're forced to cross paths with it. And then holy shit! We hear the cries of daddy and the group collectively become shitless and leave the injured Jim to fend for himself. Like they leave that mother trucker so fast. Jim's wife Shannon is pissed and is cussing them out real good as she continues on with the injured Jim towards the house for help. And the exact opposite of help shows up with the zany, jerky appearance of Victor Crowley. This scene is so cool as Victor tears their asses apart with his hatchet and hands as the rest of the group scatters like swamp roaches. Is that a thing? Woo! The group is all together. Well, with the exception of Doug, who got separated from the group and managed to direct himself into the perfect spot for a Victor Crowley murder-death-kill scene. So, later Douglas. But the group searches on for him, finds his stuff, and oh man, Pandora's box is open and secrets are coming out left and right. Sean's many fake accents are exposed, and director Doug Shapiro, he's a real piece of shit, and you'll see why he totally deserved what happened to him. What an asshole. And after the group's mini meltdown, we end act two. Psst, help me avoid a mini meltdown by subscribing, and have some friends subscribe to help keep me sane. Thank you so much, now let's get on to act two likes and dislikes. Act 2, like, thank goodness for the solid supporting characters, really helped take the focus away from Ben. Doug Shapiro, the sleazy director, is so slimy but hilarious, and Sean is almost lovable as the con man tour guy with many masks. I just really like these characters. Again, I can't say enough how much I gushed over the set design, especially when it came to the lighting and the rain effects, just really fun atmosphere that I praised to the fullest. On the subject of gushing, the gore and the kills were on point and I think you're going to enjoy them thoroughly. Quiet Act 2 like, I really enjoyed the lore of Victor Crowley and how it was told. Made me feel good like the backstory reveals of the 80s classics. Act 2 dislikes, none that come to mind so let's get to Act 3 and the bloody finale of Hatchet. Act 3, the group finds Dougie Duck. Ugh. And when luckily finding Misty's cell phone, the group discovers that they ran in a complete circle and have arrived back at Big Vic's house. And oh fuck, looking around in Crowley's shed for some weapons, Mary Beth finds the remains of her missing loved ones. So sad. And oh my god, Victor shows up to play yay, and Jenna and Sean are in for some closed casket ways of becoming unalive. Victor is really pissed off about these trespassers. We are down to the final four, and Guppy Guts Ben shockingly decides to rally the troops together and take the fight to Victor. It's a bold move, Cotton, let's see if it pays off for him. Yeah, it goes about as well as you think it would, as Marcus insults Victor the same way the Losers Club was verbally insulting Pennywise. Only, Victor brushes that shit off and fecks them up real good. You know, I take that back because the survivors actually put up their dukes and fought back decently and even managed to light up Victor Crowley. But Murphy's Law rolls in with the rain and allows Crowley to cool off and then continue fecking them up. 
all that shit talking caught up to Marcus as Victor does what Victor does. And then we have Ben and Mary Beth sitting in a boat. K-I-S-S. Wait a minute, wait a minute. That's not what's happening here. They are trying to enjoy a moonlight getaway when Victor pops up and ruins the moment. And I'm not going to say any more. I'm going to let you enjoy this miserable ending. Speaking of memorable endings, let's end this video on a great ending by liking and subscribing. Now let's get to Act 3, Likes and Dislikes, and how I felt about Hatchet overall. Act 3, Like, the kills were fantastic throughout the film, but especially in this final act. Creative and one-upping itself as the movie went on, this was like Terrifier before Terrifier even came out. Act 3, Easter Egg, Like, oh man. Victor finishes off Marcus in similar fashion and how Kane Hodder finished one of his victims off and a Friday the 13th movie. Let's see if you see what I'm talking about. Okay, Act 3 dislike and sadly kind of a movie dislike is that I felt absolutely nothing for these final characters. Didn't really care for Mary Beth and sure as hell didn't root for or care for Ben. So this was a weird feeling of the finale despite a terrific ending. I don't want to leave on a negative note though because they did the task of their roles and collectively the cast was fantastic as a unit. Overall this movie has a very special place in my heart. It was sent to me while I was deployed in Iraq and after a really shitty mission this movie just helped to lift my spirits up and I'll never forget that. Watching this film again just fills my horror heart because of the 80s elements and charm. Hatchet truly is an unsung hero and franchise of this genre. Well that's it for today's episode of Tar and my high praise for Hatchet and I hope you have the same sentiments towards this 80s style slasher. It has been an absolute pleasure. Please like and subscribe. Tell some friends. My name is Gilbert Ibarra. Thank you so much for watching the Attic Review. Smile Tiger.